This is a map of Endor, also known as Inarath. You may know it by its common name, Middle Earth. This map is unique in that it includes Beleriand, Numenor, and Eriador, the last one you would have seen in Lord of the Rings. I found this online and added in a distance chart to give you an idea of the scale. This is a general estimate based on the available maps, so other Tolkien fans let me know if you think this is wildly off. Based on the chart, Numenor is roughly 300 miles away from the Cape of Andras, the closest point to the continent. That's about the same distance as Chicago to Cleveland. To give you an idea of how wide that distance is on the map, it's the same distance as the farthest tip of Beleriand, which is Vinyamar, to Eret Luin, the Blue Mountains. That's the same distance as Hobbiton to Gondor. In case you're wondering, Hobbiton is about 450 miles away from Mordor, which is about the same distance as Numenor from Far Harad, which is about 480 miles, basically Chicago to Memphis. The full length of Endor, from Vinyamar to Rune, the east, is about 1150 miles, or Chicago to Boca Raton. That's also the same distance as Numenor to Rune. So I ask you, if you lived in the east, in Rune, and all you had were your legs or horses, how in the blue hell would anyone who looks like you end up in Numenor? You'd have had to have crossed nearly 1,200 miles up, over, and around two different mountain ranges and build a ship when you got there, and that's in the middle of Morgoth waging holy hell on the elves, men, and dwarves. And that's assuming you didn't get your slanty-eyed ass shanked by the Haradra, because you know niggas just love beating up Asians. So it begins. Amazon's woke ruination of Middle Earth is coming, and of course, everybody wants a piece. They're already trying to turn it into discount Game of Thrones, which will be an achievement since Game of Thrones already did that to itself. But this most recent wokeness didn't come from Amazon or the cast. No, it just came from some rando actor named Ludi Lin. You may know him for playing Liu Kang in the recent Mortal Kombat film, and a race swap Zack in the Power Rangers remake, which explains this dumbass comment. Quote, it's going to be difficult to justify building a huge world without any characters that look Asian. Turn that imagine. That's in the original tweet. I didn't say that. It's in the original tweet. Turn that imagine on us at JSALT. It's not hard. We're right here. If by right here you mean nearly 1,200 miles away, yes, you're half a continent away. There's no reason any Asian people would be in Numenor. The Akalabeth and the people of Middle-earth give us some idea of what the Numenorians were like. They appear to have sailed so far east that they saw the Gates of Morning, essentially where the sun rises, which would imply that they sailed south and around Harad to the other side of the continent and would have interacted with the people there. They are said to have established colonies, so it's possible they may have interbred with the Easterlings, but Tolkien never states this. Instead, he says that they mingled with the lesser men of Endor, Middle-earth, and mainly from the south, since the elves had control over the north and northeast meaning Numenor, wouldn't have had tons of Asians. They literally weren't in that part of Middle-earth. We also know what the Numenorians looked like because Tolkien described them. Most were blonde, blue-eyed, and from the house of Hador. The rest were from the house of Beor and had dark hair and gray eyes. Essentially, they looked like human versions of the Vanyar and Noldor, respectively. They were also part Eldar or Elf to begin with, so that's not really surprising. The point is that none of the Numenorians themselves would look Asian. They also wouldn't look black. Very few of them would be mixed race, especially if the Amazon show is supposed to happen during the height of their power. They weren't mixing with other people then. So in the best case scenario, you can have Easterling visitors to the island. But again, it's 1,200 miles over mountain ranges and in the middle of conflict between groups of men and remnants of Morgoth's hordes. Just like we didn't see a lot of Asian people in the Mediterranean and Western Europe for centuries until faster methods of travel came along, same thing here. They wouldn't be there. And they don't have to be. Lu Di Lin is Chinese, so he should know that China has thousands of years of stories to pull from. There is literally no reason to hijack Lord of the Rings to be more inclusive. You have plenty of tales no one outside of China even knows about. Adapt some of those. But we know what this is really about. One, he wants a job. Two, Lord of the Rings is popular. And because it's popular and well-known and beloved, it must be destroyed. That's all this is about. Power and control. That's it. They can't create anything as interesting as Middle Earth, so they will take it and wreck it so that no one will like it anymore while also wanting to be a part of the thing that's being liked. That's not always the conscious intent, 
but the intention is always there. And I know it sounds contradictory, but that's how these folks work. Think about every time you see them doing all these self-insert characters. It's not enough for them to add themselves into the story and make those characters the bestest ever. It's also that you're supposed to like the character. Look at how much they flip out when the characters don't get over. Why would you care if no one liked the character if it were just about representation? Because it's not. It's about power and control. They want to be the beloved dictator. And they swear they'll be benevolent. They swear it. They swear it on... On... On the precious. They don't think about the ramifications of anything that they're doing. Like how they're twisting and ruining Tolkien's story. Turning it into a literary wraith of itself. They're throwing out everything that Tolkien held dear and intrinsic to Middle-earth. Anyone who reads Tolkien will notice the Christian and European mythology guide and story. The fall of Numenor is a double reference, one to the fall of man, the other to the fall of Atlantis. Hell, it's even called Atlantia after its downfall. Tolkien was very specific in his word and story choices, and he really didn't like being edited. If something was there, he meant it to be there, and as many have said before, one didn't go around editing Tolkien. And that's not to put the man on the pedestal. It's just to say that the appeal of a live action show about his work is to see his work come to life as he intended it. He described what the characters looked like. That's what we want to see. He described and even drew what the locations look like. That's what we want to see. He told us what Middle Earth was like. We finally have the technology to create his vision as he described it. Do that. I understand taking some artistic liberties. I understand and even hope for people changing things to make them work better for film. You make Frodo young because you'd kill the tension if 17 years pass before Frodo leaves for Mordor like he did in the book. But you don't make him a girl, or black, or a transgender deerkin. Respect the lore. Except that Tolkien knew what he was doing. There's a reason his books have been in print for nearly 80 years. And I promise you, I promise you, it's not because of my representation. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.